So, Pokemon Let's Go Eevee and Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu, henceforth known just as Pokemon Let's Go for the sake of brevity. Although brevity is never really my thing, but I'm going to give it a go, I suppose. I'm rambling already. Some people are already convinced they hate it because they like to prejudge things and have knee-jerk reactions against things they're making assumptions about because we don't know enough about them yet and are too stupid or impatient to wait and see. And some people are curious but cautious and some are genuinely excited and thrilled and hyped. And some Pokemon Go players I've spoken to whom this game is meant to tempt into or perhaps back into the world of Pokemon RPG games seem to barely be aware of it. So targeted marketing not really a thing yet it seems. Hello again, I am Blunty, and I have actually played Pokemon Let's Go, although Nintendo wouldn't let me film or capture anything of my playthrough. In fact, they wouldn't even let me take a photo of the Pokeball Plus controller in my hand, even if the screen and gameplay wasn't even in the shot. <sighs> I have a lot of love for what Nintendo do when it comes to the games they sell, but holy moly, Nintendo can be a frustration of monumental biblical proportions to deal with as a content creator. Anyway, that's why you're looking at B-roll of E3 instead of something more tightly relevant to what I'm actually talking about. So back to point. Pokemon Let's Go. I've played it. I'm not going to break down everything we know about the game here. This is more about the feel and impression of playing it rather than breaking down and talking about the pure mechanics of it all. What I was interested in is, does it feel like a Pokemon game should feel? Now, I came to Pokemon Let's Go worried but curious. I'm an OG Pokemon player, I've been on board since the franchise started with Red and Blue, and people are worried about Pokemon Let's Go because of the changes they're making to how Pokemon is played and how it always has been played. And while every new generation of Pokemon game and even the remakes have tweaked, changed, altered, added, removed various elements of gameplay and metagame and ancillary features, Pokemon has always changed. It's probably fair to say that none of them in the more than two decades of Pokemon RPG games changing have altered core mechanics and gameplay as dramatically as Pokemon Let's Go seems to. At the core of many players' anxiety about this game is things like removing wild Pokemon battles, a core and for some essential aspect of a Pokemon game. Battles are fun, trying to weaken the Pokemon just enough to boost catch rates without knocking it out as a careful skill-based mechanic, a lovely little balancing act, at least until late game when you level up a level 100 something or other with full swipe or whatever on it <laughs> and for the more sophisticated deep level and competitive players it's where they target specific pokemon for specific stat boosts a method known as ev training and without wild battles many feel that pokemon let's go has lost something vital something essential something important to the pokemon experience and i agree the retardation of the Pokemon catching experience in order to dumb it down to a level that the mindless grinder mobile game Pokemon Go players are familiar with is bordering on offensive to me. But the process actually did feel pretty fun to play. The basics are this, you throw berries at the Pokemon to make them easy to catch and you physically waggle your motion controller in the direction of your TV to throw a ball at it. Some Pokemon move about side to side and they'll do attack animation sometimes which makes them immune to a Pokeball hit. If this is sounding very, very familiar to Pokemon Go, it's because it is. And they're also using that shrinking ring mechanic from Pokemon Go that means the smaller the cycling ring is, the more accurate you are when hitting it at its smallest point, the greater your chances are of catching it. They've taken what is and has always been a core and essential Pokemon mechanic and made it into an idiotic waggle controller minigame. Grr. That said, it has its own merits. Outside of my own annoyance that they're dumbing shit down from what has worked for Pokemon gamers of all ages for the last two decades... It is actually a bit of fun. At least while the novelty was fresh, I suspect it will get less interesting the more I have to do it throughout the playthrough. But at least on first blush, it was fun. There is some skill involved in proper timing and prediction of the Pokemon moving around, and you don't have to flail around like someone having a seizure to throw the ball. A moderate flick of the wrist, overhand or even underhand, works perfectly well. And you do have to account for the angle of your throw, lest it sail off the side of the target. Pokeballs and berries and such are obtained as prizes for winning battles against NPC trainers, which you can rebattle over and over again for experience and resource grinding. But my Nintendo guide, through my experience, had no idea how often you can do this, or even if there was some sort of cooldown, if there was a limit to how many times you could do each one, or even if every trainer can be rebattled, or if the loot drops vary depending on how often you do this. He was not very helpful at all with any question I put to him, actually. 
Sadly, my Nintendo hired guide hovering over my shoulder, grumbling at me when I tried to do things like drop into the menus for a look around, was of very little help with basically any question I had about the deeper mechanics or game flow at all. But outside of the wild Pokemon catching experience, the thing most people seem to have a problem with, the game did feel pretty great. It felt like a Pokemon game. My time with Pokemon Let's Go was spent entirely within Viridian Forest, which was laid out, as far as I could tell, exactly like it always has been. Even several of the dialogue drops from NPCs and trainers seem to be the same as they were in Pokemon Yellow. Something I really do enjoy is wild Pokemon are no longer hidden by grass, instead they're actually clearly visible in the overworld. They're still restricted to the grass patches, but you can see them wander back and forth on their short little loops. You can even see if they're large or small variations with a differently coloured translucent sort of sparkly ring around them as they wander around. My barely useful Nintendo guide had no idea if a large Pokemon had more likelihood of different stats to a small Pokemon, or like perhaps smaller ones had more chance of being faster and larger ones better chances of being stronger, I asked him, and he blinked at me as though the thought had never occurred to him, or it seems anybody else who has been playing it at E3 for the last three days. Seems like an obvious question to me, but whatevs. But if that were true, it would at least make it interesting, otherwise it's just a pointless gimmick. Small, big, who cares? Does size really matter? <laughs> My guide also couldn't tell me if shiny Pokemon would appear as shiny in this overworld view, or if their shiny status would only be revealed once the encounter was triggered. <sighs> as you walk around, though, you've got either Eevee or Pikachu riding on your hat or shoulders or whatever, but you can also have a second Pokemon out of its wall following behind you, which is cute. Although, when you change direction and you have to walk through where these Pokemon were standing, instead of sort of elegantly moving to the side or around or through or jumping over you or whatever, they just kind of pop out of existence and pop back into existence again behind you once you've finished your turn. It seems like a lazy bit of AI game design and it really breaks the sense of immersion when this happens. I suppose you could write a bit of headcanon and, and they're sort of popping into their Pokeball then out again to save you stepping on them. I don't know, it seems stupid to me, but... It is still a cute feature that Pokemon players have been asking for to return to the game since we last saw it in Pokemon Diamond, Pearl and Platinum, and in the remakes, Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver. My team of Pokemon the demo provided me had amongst it all three original Kanto starters, and you can even attain them in the game, just as you could from Pokemon Yellow, which Pokemon Let's Go is said to be inspired by. It's not a remake! It's not a remake! It's inspired by Pokemon Yellow. Yeah, okay guys, sure. Moving around and the basic mechanics of battle all felt very, very familiar. And while it's unfair to judge the final product based on this still-in-development build I was playing, I will say that while the 3D models of the Pokemon looked absolutely fantastic, highly detailed and smooth and rich and lovely, and, and things like super fine furry textures on them and stuff were appropriate, the overworld looked a bit dated in comparison. There was no anti-aliasing for a start. There was a lot of obvious and chunky pixels everywhere, especially evident on foliage. I hope they polish this up for release because it was kind of remarkably distracting compared to the obvious care that went into the Pokemon models themselves. There was a jarring contrast there, which I didn't like. But again, it really did feel like a proper Pokemon game. The look and the feel, the atmosphere, the colours, the sounds, the, you know, the characters, it all felt properly Pokemon. It's just the mechanics they've been digging with. I walked away from a gameplay a bit more enthusiastic about Pokemon Let's Go than when I walked in. I was encouraged by my short experience. I don't expect it'll rank among my top favourite Pokemon games of all time, but I do expect it will be an enjoyable, if irkingly dumbed down and oversimplified, example of the franchise. And aside from what is going to be an even lower level of challenge than most Pokemon games, again, they say it's inspired by Yellow, not a remake, but I have my doubts about just how fresh it will feel. I can only assume they quickly cobbled together this game from a small team and from as many existing assets as possible in order to buy the larger Game Freak teams more time to work on getting the proper next generation, fresh and shiny and new Pokemon game ready for next year. I would bet London to a brick the new one was supposed to come out this year, but they just didn't have it ready in time, so now we get this. Well, that's a great thing in the long run. The more time they spend on the game, the better it'll be, right? But this does make two consecutive years of slapped-together Pokemon games made out of existing parts, with Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon being close enough to identical to their predecessor games, Sun and Moon, 
And when that happened, I thought they did that to buy them extra time to get the Pokemon Switch game ready. Maybe they did that to buy them time to make Pokemon Let's Go in order to buy them more time to make Pokemon Switch or whatever it winds up being. I don't know. Game development is weird sometimes, isn't it? And I'm just guessing. But now, with another faux remake quickly shoved out the door, well, it hasn't been an especially rewarding couple of years as a Pokemon fan, has it? Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon were good games, and I enjoyed playing them, and they fixed a lot of things I didn't like about Sun and Moon, but in the end, it's not a new game. And, and now here we stand with Pokemon Let's Go looming on our doorsteps in the place of something fresh and new and exciting. But I am willing to give Pokemon Let's Go a fair go on its own merits when it comes out. I'll be there day one with an open mind, hoping to be pleasantly surprised, but with expectations set at a low level where I won't need to throw an internet tantrum if it turns out it's all a bit soulless and vapid. I strongly suggest you do the same. Just because it's simplified, just because it's dumbed down, just because it's made to attract the brainless mobile players across to the main series doesn't mean it can't be fun. It just means it's not as exciting as what a brand new game would be, that's all. Adjust your expectations to the right place and maybe it'll be worth a buy. Thanks for watching. I am Blunty and I will catch you next time.